Black Pharaoh. Forgot the H at the end. Interesting. There we go. Mouse sensitivity was a little high. I like rearranged my whole desk today. Peacemail says, pretty good, just vibing. Haley says, good, mostly just doing some doodling. Gonna be mostly listening. Oh, that's cool. Hopefully you're having fun. Is there anything else around here? No. Jeremy. You shouldn't have come. Don't say that. You needed my help. All I wanted was to keep people away from Dissetto. Especially you, Emily. You're the only one in the family who forgave me for choosing old age over death. Father still cares for you? He is paying for your treatment at Dissetto. To get rid of me! That's the only reason anyone's at this chateau. Someone in the family thought you were becoming an embarrassment. Help me get you out of this mess, Jeremy. I want to take you away. Your father would send me right back. Mm. What if I take you up north, to Kingsport? I know Mother still has family up there. I've been thinking about going for a while now. <gasps> I haven't been to Massachusetts in years. I still paint from memory, you know? That old lighthouse makes for a great motif. Your father and I would go almost every summer. Then when our great uncle died, we stopped going back. What is there to be done about the dark man? He's the one holding you back, right? You feel like you can't leave without paying your debt to him. The dark man has been with me since I was 12 years old. He was standing right on that stage right over there. For a brief moment, his gaze held mine. And that was it. I recognized him for what he was. The heart with guys embodied in flesh. I thought it was my turn. But I was only there to be mocked. Instead, his attention moved on to my father sitting next to me. I turned to him and saw his face. The widest shade of pale I've ever seen. He bit off his tongue that night and suffocated. What can be done, Jeremy? Please. There's a way. Two ways to be exact. One voice and the other. A written contract now buried inside his sunken temple. Don't you remember what it said? <gasps> I don't want to. Try, Jeremy. What did the contract say? No, we can't. We can't let Wallen suffer that blight. I have to make this sacrifice. What are you talking about? Is this the thing from the bayou? Juan said something. Ah! Hmm. Okay, so there is a way to break the pact at least. Hidden somewhere inside the dark man's temple. I just need to find it somehow. Oh, I know this. Um... Yeah, Gemini, Virgo, Pisces. We've seen this one before. Interesting. Gemini, Virgo, Pisces. Oh, okay, so the, the farthest out ring needs to be two, because that's Pisces, right? And then the middle ring is Gemini, and the middle ring is Virgo. So, let's try this. Okay. 
Uh, oop, wrong one. So two, three, four, five, two, five, six, seven, eight. Two, five, eight. So the furthest one out is going to be... Where is that? Two, oh, shoot. Two, five, eight. It's inside one of these sconces. Or is it just the room in general? Oh, that's a cool effect. Look at that. That's kind of neat. Kind of intense. The perspective shift in there, I think it might just be an FOV thing. I can't really tell. But like looking at it, it, it really looks like just like a completely different universe in there. Can't get out. It's locked now. I see. One of the things I was thinking of is that um, Jeremy looks a lot like Carnby from the actual original game. He's wearing like a very similar outfit. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Okay, this place eats the light, but then as we get here, it brightens up. And this is sand? Are we in a... a uh, are we in a, a, a pyramid? Oh, creepy eclipse. Find a way inside the sunken temple? Oh, man, this is cool. Okay. Sure, we'll take this. Hmm. Light tells me to go this way. There's blood there. Let's check over here. I probably can't get down this way. Yeah, I can't. Huh. This is moody. I like this. Kirby says all the best things happen during the eclipse. <laughs> it's true. Also, hello everyone on YouTube. Uh, hope you're doing well. It is admittedly a little bit hard for me to see my YouTube chat right now. I gotta move some stuff around. There we go. Maybe, yeah, that'll make it a little bit easier. I need to get down there somehow. Hmm. Gold coins. Old king. Pharaoh of some kind. Can't pick up the lanterns. It's kind of a pain. Can't go over there. Interesting. This game's very cinematic, very pretty. Oh, those are tents. Okay. Ooh, rope. Always helpful. 
beyond the Nile Valley. The temple of Nephron Ka lies under our camp. Despite all efforts, that unholy site did not collapse, but sink beneath the sand. The pharaoh is long dead, his name meticulously stricken from all ancient writing. But that stage meant for blood and terror remains. The temple is said to be lightless, built to harbor all the haunters of the dark found in the very depths of our universe. Calling on the gods meant creating a bridge between our world and theirs. The terrible Aldebaran of Taurus, the Black Sun, was seen as the most important star in the night sky. Because, according to the Kitab al -Azif, it was said to be the home of that crawling chaos known as Nyalahotep. Through ancient mechanisms, it was said that the priests could open shafts channeling the light emitted by that strange stone called the Shining Trapezohedron. Several streams pulled together above the statue of that dark man would then be sent through space towards the Black Sun, a message to the gods. The gifts bestowed on the sender are completely undocumented, but often assumes to involve dark blood pacts, where souls are traded for malicious miracles. Mm hmm. Versus Liam O'Brien? Uh, might be, yeah. I'd, I'd have to look. Uh, Yuri Lowenthal was in this. Um. There might have been a, uh. What's his name? Uh. Travis Willingham, possibly. Oh, dear God. I thought those were, like, birds or something at first. Dear Lord. Um, so, yeah, it might be the might be the same union, the same crew. Okay, you can do this, Emily. Whoa. Oh, I thought it was first person all of a sudden. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Sir Flabby Bit says, Hi everyone, Toaster say playing the game on YouTube. Don't know why everyone says the game is boring, it looks fun. This game's great so far. The big star is Aldebaran. Something to do with the dark damned. Aldebaran? Is that how she just pronounced that? Isn't it Aldebaran? I've seen this in a dream, but it's a shallow pit of darkness. This is definitely where the contract is hidden, but how do I get there? This is interesting. People's lack of appreciation for this game genuinely makes me think, like, people out there who've never played Eternal Darkness are like, why can't we get an Eternal Darkness remake or sequel? And every single time they say that, I'm going to be like, because people would fucking hate it. Look at how they received Alone in the Dark. Like, unbelievable. Canopic jar. It's got squid on it. That's probably not good. Oh, God. Oh. Alright. Alright, we're safe. Things aren't so terrible. All right, so I ostensibly need to align the lasers. Is, is it a phone ringing? Interesting. Ooh, so cool. Are there rattlesnakes in Egypt? I know that's a weird question, but I've never thought about it before. I should know this. I just realized that so many like Eastern, Eastern, uh, like Egyptian and Middle Eastern themed uh, 
settings always use that like rattlesnake snake sound to denote snakiness. Hmm. There's something missing. The horizon, a lens crafted with unexpected precision and fitted with a telling hieroglyph. Ah. Uh. Is this just to to tell me? I think this one moves. It worked. Okay. Can I take it out now? I cannot. All right, so we're gonna need to solve a spirit temple puzzle here. But yeah, I don't know if um. I don't know if there are rattlesnakes in Egypt. Are they a North American snake? I'm sure there are vipers and stuff, right? And other extremely dangerous venomous snakes, but I don't know about rattlesnakes. I, I don't mean that in a, even in a doubtful way. I just, I don't know. I have no idea. I should know. My dad spent a pretty significant part of his childhood in Africa, but and specifically in Egypt, but I don't know. I wonder if my dad still has his, his Kenyan nationality. I think, I don't remember if it was Kenya or Nigeria. I think it might have been Nigeria. I don't remember specifically. says Toaster's dad is Indiana Jones. Far from it. He's very much not Indiana Jones. Whoa. Okay. So those can burn. Can we kill these guys? Go on, fly. Idiot. Give it a try. Oh, yes, we can kill him. Okay. Children of a Dark Sun. That's cool. Dark Sun is my favorite D&D campaign setting. I see. So we'll definitely need to get light up here somewhere, I think. What does going under here do? Actually, I don't know if I would say Dark Sun is my favorite D&D campaign setting. I like it a lot. Planescape might still win over it. I don't know. I would have to think. I'd have to think about that. But Dark Sun's very cool. I like Dark Sun a lot. Oh, that's a snake. That's a snake. That was startling. I was startled. Hey, Sam. Crude chunk. All right, we got a star one. It's kind of cool. Nothing else there. Hmm. Oh, an 
ads. Interesting. They have labels. Okay, so this one is the star. I can't use it on this one yet. So we just have to go one by one through them. Prokochno says, when was your first TTRPG campaign? Because from looking at how detailed and deep your writing goes, you seem to love it. Um, I don't remember. Um, I was... Probably seven or eight, maybe. Um, I got my start really young, but not playing at actual tables. I, I would say my real start was uh, playing. Sorry, hold on, I'm trying to see up here. Okay, I can't burn that one. I can't move it that far. Oh. That's interesting. All right. Um, my first exposure to D&D outside of my dad's campaign books that he just had on a shelf that I like never fully understood was uh, Baldur's Gate. Um, so I played that in, I want to say... When did it come out? 98? Definitely sometime around then. So I got started with AD&D 2E, basically. Read those books, bought a bunch of those. Um, it worked. My, uh, my first campaign that I played was probably when I was... Man, let's think. I was probably 10, and it was probably third edition. Um, but I was just running like adventure paths and like games with friends. Then, uh, probably around the same time. Maybe in 2001 or 2002. No, yeah, because I wouldn't have been 10. I'm trying to think. I think the first campaign I played was 2001. I would have to look up the dates. It's been so long and it it's hard for me to remember. So I was, I was somewhere between 8 and 12 is when I played my first D&D campaign. But then also around that time, I played Neverwinter Nights for the first time. And a huge portion of my tabletop experience comes from Neverwinter Nights um, playing it online. And I mean the original Neverwinter Nights, not the MMO Neverwinter. Um, because the original Neverwinter Nights was basically just a DM toolkit that you played the games in. Um, and I had, I have so much experience playing, oh God, that startled me, playing and DMing within the confines of that system. Um, and around that time as well, I was, um, sorry, uh, I was also, um, doing a lot of forum role playing. I died. I can't talk and do survival horror at the same time. It's so hard. Um, so around the same time, there we go. I was uh, doing a lot of forum role playing and, uh, you know, text based, play by post, basically. Not quite play by post, but basically play by post um, games. And most of that wasn't um, dice oriented, it was just storytelling based and, and collaborative. So I had a lot of experience with that. Um, 
but yeah, uh, that's that's where that comes from. But one of the things that I'll say is that in all of my time playing tabletop, uh, the thing that makes me good at writing for tabletop has nothing to do with tabletop. It's uh, almost entirely just that I have spent a lot of my life writing. Um, <laughs> and just being good at writing makes you good at tabletop um, in a lot of ways. So that's my answer to that. That's my uh, explanation of, of why I, I guess I go deep in my writing. And it's just because I'm turning 31 this year and I've been writing stories since I was, I don't know, able to hold a pencil. I watch a lot of media. I write a lot of stuff. I work on a lot of projects. It just comes with time and experience. It's really all it is. Fuck him up. Oh, I can't get down there. Oh well. There we go. Now, what did that do for me? So yeah, that's my that's my background. Um, I've played lots of games since then. I will say, up until no playing games, I actually hadn't played a tabletop game in probably probably a decade. Last time I was really involved in tabletop was college. Um, so I played a lot for like ten years and then stopped <laughs> and then just stopped I just didn't have time for it um yeah didn't have time for it but I do now um so that's where all that comes from but yeah uh in in the end tabletop is is ultimately just writing it's just about writing really well and uh, if you have a good experience in writing and performance, like I do, um, I think tabletop can come really naturally. I think it's it's probably the the medium, quote unquote, that I have the easiest time telling stories in, um, because it's just a fusion of all the other different creative mediums and outlets that I like. I didn't realize how low on health I was. It was really dangerous. Floppy Bed says, you make me feel slightly less old. How am I... Is it because I'm older than you? <laughs> Yeesh. Okay. Oh. He got... scrunked. I still got snagged. Brutal. So just says you make me feel old because apparently you're younger than me. I am I turn 31 this year. I turned 31 during LVFC. It's my birthday weekend. drink another potion real quick get my uh, health up a little so I don't need to worry about it Get dunked on, dude. Get absolutely wrecked. These enemies can't do anything to stop me. I'm so slippery. Alrighty. Huh. 
Huh. Ceremonial dagger. Cool. Acknowledge psychological trauma. Break through the barriers of self-deceit. Temper manic behavior. Is this it? Is this the contract? <laughs> We're getting Elden ringed. We're getting Dark Soulsed. We're going to Ann Orlando. Damn, chapter four. Oh, Jeremy. How much pain and suffering you could have prevented. Emily? Oh, oh my God. What are you doing? Detective, uh, how is your investigation going? Well, I still have no clue where Jeremy is, but I think I know why he's hiding. This place is full of lunatics planning to perform some kind of ritual tonight. Well, that sounds ridiculous. Or rather would have just a day ago. It gets worse. I have reason to believe they killed anyone who didn't want to go along with the plan. Detective, have you encountered any monsters tonight? I just told you, I think they killed people. Beauregard, the author, Perosi, the singer, Mr. Waits, the clerk, Mr. Chance, the gardener, they're all missing. No, I mean, have you fired your gun tonight? Of course not. They wouldn't just kill outsiders like that. It would bring too much attention. But you should keep your eyes open. So you haven't seen anything strange been anywhere else? What are you trying to tell me, Emily? Are you in some kind of danger? Let me drive you back to New Orleans. I think I have enough. You know, at least get the police to take a look at this case. No, I'm fine. Thank you, detective. Hmm. I'll find your uncle, Miss Harwood. Just stay out of trouble. Floppy says, isn't the other player character the dude from Stranger Things? Yeah, he's played by David Harbour, and then Emily here is played by Jodie Comer, who's from, like, Killing Eve and a few other things. He must first acknowledge psychological trauma in order to proceed. The lying must stop so we can break through the barriers of self-deceit. Finally, temper manic behavior. Hmm. This is the contract. It does have like Egyptian on it. Nine one three. Is that the safe code? That might be the safe code. Um. Hmm. It is the Dursetto paperwork though. So. Medicine has failed me. Nothing can be done to dispel the hardwood curse. Curse. Only the sacrificial dagger may release the despair from Jacob's eye. Yet, doing so would be the doom of Dersetto. Let this curse of mine be a weapon for once. I accept your demands, oh, crawling chaos. Build your prison around this godforsaken hospital. When evil has been starved, I will stay. Buried forever. Hmm. Medicine has failed me. Oh, is there no other page? Okay. Interesting. Okay, so it's nighttime now. Intriguing. So we were drugged by the little girl earlier. That still hasn't developed into anything. It's getting rough up there. Sure is. The struggling sounds we heard in the attic earlier. I need the key. Interesting. Just realized, well, recognize that I should say. If we can just get rid of Jeremy, everything will go back to normal. That reminds me. I saw Miss Emily earlier. You remember her? You know she's Jeremy's niece. 
She's looking for him. That's right. She's helping us. In her own way. As long as she don't stand in the way of the mother of a thousand young. <laughs> I don't think she knows or cares about that. She just helped the job. <laughs> I'll be more worried about that Detective Carmen fella. He's been snooping around asking all kinds of questions. God, it hurts. I wish you would stop doing that. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. Huh. I want to check out the second floor. I think I've already been to the second floor here, but let's just check it out real quick. You don't remember where this leads. Yeah, it's barred from this side. That's what it was. Okay. Huh. Okay, that's still barred as well. Moody. Man, <laughs> the lighting in this game is great. Anything over here for me? No, but the rot has progressed pretty significantly out from the... Oh yeah, everything's getting really rotted here. The mother of a thousand young, huh? What is going on here? It's blocked. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to go back that way. Can't go downstairs either. Where can we go? That's oh, that's just a shadow, I think. Yeah, it's just a shadow. No, no, that's wet. Gross. Look at that green water that only shows up when you cast a flashlight over it. <laughs> Again, imagine having a clawfoot tub in a marble bathroom and you just don't even clean it. Couldn't be me. We must have faith that Jeremy's pact with the dark man is a bluff. If we are lucky, our visitors will find him and prove it's all nonsense before night falls. What is true is our attempt to call on her. Too many things have happened for this evening to be in vain. Think of Jack and Cassandra, even Perosi, whose circumstances I can't understand. Grace is our goat without horns. She knows it and will play the role. You must talk to your brother, Batiste. I worry that he will fail us. Hmm. Mrs. Thompson. Oh, I looked it up last night, and Goat Without Horns is a reference to Gabriel Knight. Which is kind of fun. Radio station's guide. Neat. It's blocked. That whole area is blocked now. Okay, how about over here? Well, I don't want to run into the orderlies right now. I should find another way. Do not disturb. I think Dr. Gray is in there. Maybe I can go snoop around his office then. Yeah, they aren't talking enough to really hear. You could, I could hear something about shallow grave. Something, something shallow grave is enough, but it's a little bit too muffled to really make out. Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony, a monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Castle. 
The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Pontchartrain. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Castle did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. Hmm. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of their Seto's history. Okay. One thing I noticed, uh, Ledoux is the name of one of the bad guys, or without getting too deeply into it, one of the antagonists of the first season of True Detective, which is a Lovecraft and cosmic horror story. So that's kind of interesting. I wonder. Wonder if that was a deliberate reference. I mean, it is just a common name in New Orleans as well, so. Even the name Dorseto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. In the case of naming the plantation, their seto was certainly not an accident. We know that Elia Pickford intended to build a temple for his cult, for he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of the land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns, when the plantation was built. To outsiders, Dorsetto registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Hmm. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Dorsetto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigrath. As much as Dorsetto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely uncommon among the learned. Astarte is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by well-read artists. Shub Nigrath is, on the other hand, very uncommon. Almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard that name. The name is referenced only in rare books like Unausprechlichen Kulten and the Necronomicon, and is believed to be a bastardization of Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. The few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion resting on such qualities. The Shub Nigarath cult was hard to get rid of, but it is believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Darsetto's grounds. When Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at Darsetto as malnourished and maniacal. As much as the army tried to save them, they fought back with fervor, as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte Artis colony remains a mystery, the recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice to that fertility goddess with a thousand names. Huh. Interesting. Any other good collectibles around here for me? No. Opera Playbill, Dito and Aeneas. We also saw the, the music notes for the Dito play. Mm -hmm. 
It's too muffled. You can't make out anything. Oop. Did I just out of bounds? That was weird. Here we go. I'm definitely going to need more ammo. I, I don't really have any, which is going to be a serious problem. Mrs. Thompson, I understand the last week has been busy. Under these circumstances, I find it important to remind you that Ursetto's concerns are not a public matter, nor is it something that should upset you. Please continue your excellent work, and don't spend a thought on the death of Perosi, or, more importantly, the suicide of Cassandra Beauregard. They should mean nothing to you or the staff. I rely on your loyalty, and trust that your close kinship with the Tabois siblings will keep Tercetto's secrets hidden. Dr. Gray. Okay. Yeah, the siblings are definitely bad. Cassandra Beauregard offed herself, which is not great um, for us. Maybe that was the noose in the uh, in the attic and not actually belonging to our uncle. I thought it was raining. I mean, I guess it is. It's not that much. Anything new over here? That'd be a no. The cat still going to be under here? Nope. Am I able to finally go back? Nope. All right, so we'll have to go up here and into the, um, the main office. Uh, let's go check out the clerk's office first, actually. Because if I have the password, I'm going to be very pleased. If Mr. I... Waits must have had a spare key to Dr. Bree's office, but where? I don't know the combination. Wait, maybe I do. So it's going to be left, right, left, right? So, um... Here, hold on. Uh, nine, one, three. I'm it so worked. good. I'm so good. I recognize that shit right away. The second we got that letter, I knew that was going to be the combo. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guests seemed to adopt a new worldview in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Hmm. So something's fucking going on there. Here we are, Dr. Gray's office. Now let's see if we can find 
I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. Mm, we know where that goes. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm, eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this Chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. Interesting. So we're probably going to need to find a way to get onto his steamboat then. Hmm.